And good morning. Welcome to Your Vote Council. We're talking about people who don't like government, okay? And there's a lot of people out there, but the main thing they don't like is when the government spends money recklessly, right? The Loft Report, which was issued a couple of weeks ago, said $3 billion have not been properly spent. The AG has agreed. Your thoughts? Yeah, uh, look, we already talked about this on the show once, about how Loft was created, why it's important, and this recent look that they've taken at OMES and its spending capability. Let me just talk for a second about Loft and the reason why I think it's a good um, uh, backbone right now in state government is state agencies um, can often do what they want, make their own rules, uh, spend money the way that they see fit, whereas the state legislature is supposed to give them that power. Loft is really uh, that tip of the sword that can come in and make sure that there's transparency and accountability in the way that we're spending the state's money and the way that those agencies are operating. It's an incredibly important agency right now, uh, especially with um, how much some of the state agencies are just kind of doing stuff on their own. Mm -hmm. Okay, you voted for that when you were in the legislature. You carried the bill in the legislature. Loft talking about these issues, and then the AG, Strike Eagle, says, yeah, they're exactly right. Yeah, Loft is doing exactly what I hoped it would do. Uh, it started as the Office of Accountability in 2018, uh, then Pro Tem Greg Treat took it up. That didn't get through the finish line in 2019. Pro Tem Greg Treat, Speaker Charles McCall, created Loft in Senate Bill 1. I got to carry that on the House floor. One of the things I'm most proud of. Mike Jackson, who you saw on Saturday, is doing an incredible job in Loft. It is the sword of the legislature. And then the Attorney General Drummond is showing uh, once again doing a great job showing what we are finding in Loft. We had three billion in expenses that weren't properly accounted for. Loft is the most important thing we have done in the legislature in the last six years. Greg Tree, Charles McCall, they did a great job. I was happy to be a part of it. And Mike Jackson was on hot seat yesterday and you can see that on news9.com slash your vote counts. Okay, nobody really likes government overspending, but everybody doesn't like Texas, okay? And now we're dealing with Texas again on a water issue. Help us out. So here's what's going on for the citizens at home. Texas has 1.3 acres of Oklahoma land where they drilled a well inside of it. They've had it for about 10 years. They just messed up. They drilled it on our land. And now somehow Texas thinks we're going to give that 1.3 acres back to them in exchange for a random 1.3 acres beside it. We shouldn't do that. That's... Uh, Hey, listen, real estate is all about location, location, location. You want to trade 1.3 acres? I'll take the cotton bowl. You can have the land back. But in all seriousness, uh, what's going on is leader Greg McCourtney over in the Senate and Speaker Charles McCall are over this. They're going to cut a great deal. Leader Greg McCourtney does a great job as leader in the Senate. Um, but yes, we are not giving away this prime real estate for nothing. It's not going to happen. Yeah, it's pretty offensive. And you know, Texans find things offensive up here that are <laughs> illegal, basically. But your thoughts about the water issue in Texas? Yeah, there's a couple more things that, that we have to think about on the water issue. One, because the border is on the Red River, so Texas technically gets a certain amount of uh, water acres from that, so do we. Oklahoma also has... Um, a statue right now that we don't sell water to other states. It's a big deal. Um, there was a quote from Will Rogers that um, you drink whiskey and you fight over water. Well, this is definitely a fight that we've had. Uh, Texas also brags that they have $35 billion right now of excess funds and that it would cost them $50 million to put in a new water well. I say if you're bragging about how much money you have, just build the new well. It's, n it's never too early to do this, okay? It's never too early. Hey, coming up, a pause in the turnpike situation. We'll be talking about that when we come right back. In the next... And welcome back. Hey, there was a big shakeup in the governor's cabinet this week, but all eyes are on the new secretary of education, John. Uh, absolutely. The governor named Dr. Catherine Curry, who's a professor at OSU, as his new Secretary of Education. I've not had the opportunity to meet Dr. Curry, but I'm really looking forward to working with her. You know, this governor has not shown an unwillingness to shake up his cabinet. I would argue that's a good thing. It, when he's been successful, he tries to go with it. When things aren't going exactly his way, he's not afraid to pull the reins back and move forward. Education is the biggest issue at the Capitol this year, and there is a massive fight brewing over whether or not we're going to take care of local Oklahoma schools and give parents choice, or whether or not we don't get anything done. So, Dr. Curry, welcome to the show, and uh, I, I wish you luck. We need to get all this stuff done. Did you know Oklahoma education has single-handedly single made Twitter relevant again? It's just <laughs> unbelievable. Your thoughts about the governor's shakeup? Well, let's be honest. One of the reasons that Dr. Curry is now the Secretary of Education is because our current Secretary of Education, Ryan Walters, 
um, his confirmation would not even be brought up by the state senate right now. I think that shows the difficulty of problems that we have uh, when it comes to education policy, that the governor's uh, current secretary of education couldn't get confirmed by the Senate, so he had to choose another one. Uh, you still have the, the fight between the House and the Senate over education. That continues to be a mess. Another small thing that the governor did with his cabinet was eliminate uh, the cabinet position for science and innovation. I think right now in a time where you know, artificial intelligence continues to explode, innovation uh, continues to, to push business, um, maybe it wasn't the best time to eliminate that position in the cabinet. Interesting take. Okay. Stop. All right. That's what just happened this week on the turnpikes. Talk about another issue that's red hot. This turnpike Authority has paused on building new turnpikes. Lots of activity there. Yeah, this has been red hot. If you think about the Turnpike's uh, Access Oklahoma plan, which is essentially they wanted to go out into the bond market um, and borrow another $5 billion uh, in order to continue to build turnpikes. Look, if you're an Oklahoman like myself and you look at the history of this, we've had turnpikes for 70 years now and yet they still get more expensive each year. There are a lot of politicians that have asked the question, why do we have turnpikes that we still pay for when we've had them for seven decades? And why do you need five billion new dollars in order to uh, build more of them? I think there's a lot of questions to be asked. The attorney general has asked for an audit right now of the turnpike authority because there's a lot of questions about how they're spending money and if they're doing it right. Lots of questions. Your take on it, Mr. Leader. Well, one of the things people I don't think understand about the Turnpike Authority is there is almost no oversight by the legislature. We have almost no or no control. It's a constitutionally created entity that spends an incredible sum of money. Uh, we passed some bills this year to give more legislative oversight in the House. We'll see what happens in the Senate. But do we need roads and bridges? So let's start from that baseline. Absolutely. We don't want to become like Houston. We don't want to look up at our growth pattern in Oklahoma City and say we are two decades behind. We're not where we need to be. But we've got to do it in an open and transparent manner, and we have to be fair to citizens. Remember, we give this government agency with almost no accountability to the legislature eminent domain power. Uh, I think the pause is a good thing, but we are going to have to come to some conclusion because we can't pause on growth. Okay, he brought up Houston, which allows me to do this again on the Texas thing. Hey, thanks for watching your vote counts. See this again at 